The recent closure of A Bug's Land at the Disney California Adventure Park has invoked quite a response within the Disney community, with a multitude of fans seemingly coming out of the woodwork to either share their sadness or joy over the fact that it's going away. So I wanted to take a quick look back at the land itself and talk about the brief history behind it, but to do so, let's jump back to 2001, or in other words, the opening year for Disney's California Adventure. If you're at all familiar with the history behind the park, you'll know that during its first few years, it was off to a rough start. Between the DCA's overall lack of attractions and real theming, as well as the abundance of generic off-the-shelf carnival-type rides, the park was not seeing the attendance numbers or positive critical reception that Disney had expected it to. In fact, with such low attendance numbers, the park was actually losing money when it came to operating costs. With their newest park putting them in the red financially, Disney scrambled to add more to it, leading to the addition of new attractions like Aladdin's Musical Spectacular in 2003 and the Tower of Terror in 2004. However, Disney's real first step into improving the park and attracting more guests over to it actually started with an entirely different expansion. One of the biggest complaints early visitors had about the DCA was that there really weren't any attractions for younger kids. Unlike Disneyland, with its plethora of everything from dark rides to less intense thrill attractions, the DCA really didn't offer either of those. In response, Disney announced they'd be adding a brand new land, with a couple of different attractions based off Pixar's 1998 film, A Bug's Life. This idea was mostly brought on by the success of the It's Tough to Be a Bug show that opened alongside the park in 2001, and was one of the few opening day attractions that younger crowds actually enjoyed. In order to keep the new Bugs Life land somewhat near the original show, Disney decided to put it in the Golden State section of the park, replacing a small piece of the Bountiful Valley Farm, an exhibit showcasing California's agricultural history. After that, it wasn't long before planning for a Bugs Land was completed, followed shortly after by its construction. Within less than a year, the DCA's newest expansion was finished and was ready to be unveiled. Have you ever felt the shade from a field of clover? Ever sailed on a leaf from a tree ten times your size? Ever rubbed elbows with creatures who have six of them? Now's your chance to discover a fun new land of gigantic proportions. Flix Funfair at Disney's California Adventure. Oh, come live the life of a bug in a whole new land with five new attractions. Flix Funfair, opening October 2002 at Disney's California Adventure. Ah, oh, lovely. On October 7th of 2002, A Bug's Land officially opened at Disney's California Adventure. Hosting five new attractions, the land was mostly well received, especially by its target audience. However, it still got quite a lot of critique from other visitors, mostly for some of the same reasons the rest of the park did, that being its use of generic rides. With tuck and rolls driving buggies really just being bumper cars, Francis' Ladybug Boogie being a teacups knockoff, Heimlich's Choo Choo Train being a pretty uneventful train ride, and Flick's Flyers being an average swing attraction. When looked at from a more cynical standpoint, which we all know I never do, the new land seemed somewhat cheap and pretty lazy, really banking on the fact that its main demographic were kids who wouldn't know the difference between a good and bad ride. This of course only added to complaints that Disney was going in the wrong direction when it came to the DCA's attractions, now doubling down on their use of off-the-shelf rides instead of original concepts. However, an important thing to keep in mind is that one of the main reasons A Bug's Land was completed so quickly and for as little money as possible was due to the early financial failure of Disneyland Paris, known back then as Euro Disney, which opened in 1992. To make a long story short, that park also faced similar issues when it came to attendance and ended up losing Disney millions of dollars within its first few years. With the company already being in a tight financial spot from that venture, they couldn't afford to let the DCA end up in the same situation, prompting them to add more attractions and lands as soon as possible, and for as cheap as possible too. But learning from their experience with the DCA's very own Paradise Pier, another area in the park that was generally hated for its brazen use of off-the-shelf rides, Disney now invested more money into theming the attractions first, making them seem a little less generic and more like a traditional Disney ride. Because of its more elaborate theming and attention to detail in almost every aspect, A Bug's Land remained consistently popular amongst families for more than a decade afterwards, eventually getting two new entrances into the area in 2012 to account for the higher amount of foot traffic the land was seeing. 
Things continued on that path for the next seven years, without any changes to either the attractions or the land itself. That was until March of 2018, when Disney officially announced that a Bugs Land would be permanently closing by the end of the year. Ever since the retheming of the DCA's Tower of Terror into Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout in 2017, Disney fans have been speculating on what that could possibly mean for a future comic book land in the park, with most rumors suspecting that either a Bugs Land or Hollywood Land would be removed for it. So it didn't necessarily come as the biggest of shocks when Disney announced in late March of 2018 that a Bugs Land would be closing in favor of a new Marvel-themed area that a bug's land at Disney California Adventure will be ending. It is September 4th, the day after Labor Day. Uh, Disney is sending a bug's land through the windshield to make way for a new superhero land featuring characters from Marvel Comics. That will open sometime in 2020. Disney is the parent company of ABC7. Not long after that, the It's Tough to Be a Bug show was closed on March 19th of 2018, only leaving the other four Bugs Land rides, but eventually those were closed as well on September 4th of that same year. It's yet to be seen what exactly will replace a Bugs Land, and as of now, we really only have some clues from advertisements and construction walls to work with. In addition, we also aren't too sure what'll happen to the land's attractions. There's already been some talk about one of the ride vehicles from Heimlich's Choo Choo Train being put on display at the Pixar campus. On top of that, rumors have also been floating around that Flick's Flyers will actually be repurposed as the new Inside Out ride that's set to open at Pixar Pier in 2019. Like I said, with this being a pretty recent closure, and considering Disney's method of never revealing too much info at once, we likely won't know its final fate for at least a year. In all honesty, A Bug's Land wasn't one of the California Adventure's most impressive expansions. However, I will say it was one of its most important ones. While it didn't bring the innovation or groundbreaking new technologies like the other ones might have, it accomplished its goal of attracting more people, and it did so without breaking the bank. And because of that, we were able to see some other new attractions in the future, the same ones that likely wouldn't have opened there had the DCA still been a ghost town like it was before the expansion. And despite the initial negative press, the land also managed to find its own small following of people who enjoyed it all the way up to its closing day. At this point, it's pretty safe to say that whatever does end up replacing a Bugs Land will more than likely be a lot more impressive than it was. However, I do think it's important to give the land at least some credit for being one of the first few positive changes the DCA ever had. Hey, you're Scott Harriet. You know, you look a lot bigger on TV. Yeah, well look, I lost a little weight. 